they're breaking these plows faster than I can put them back together. Anyway, this is a plow truck. It's an international. It's rusted out. It's in pretty sad shape. I think it's a 2003. All right, this one's got a, she's got an issue. Yeah, that's not good. How about this air dryer? Yeah, we probably need to fix that. So there's actually six bolts in this main thing. So it still had two of them left, but two out of six is not very good odds. Looks like the radiator, it's pouring out of there. So we can't leave it like that, it's gotta be fixed. Yeah, there's no fins left, no cooling fins. I can just strum the tubes like guitar strings. All right, folks, old Krusty's back. Guess she survived her weekend of plowing. Let's swap out the radiator and then see what else we can find. I noticed a few other problems before it even left the parking lot the last time, so. Should be an adventure. Here's our new radiator. I bought this from my usual radiator shop. They don't even try to fix these crimped plastic tank radiators, they just replace them. This is aftermarket, and it's always risky installing an aftermarket radiator. I've had mixed results. Sometimes they work okay, but when they don't work, it sucks. Especially when they don't fit or when they don't cool properly. And it's kind of a judgment call. This one's not terribly difficult to replace, so I think we'll be okay with aftermarket. Some things like heater cores and evaporator cores, there's no way. It's OEM only. There's so much labor involved in replacing those parts that the risk is just too high. Uh, just to put it in perspective, a new radiator from International is $1,800. Plus, there's a service bulletin about these isolator bushings. You have to replace these as well, these rubber mounts. They want another $120 for those. So you're, you're getting close to $2,000. This aftermarket radiator is less than $800, and it includes the, the isolator bushings. So... That's why aftermarket parts exist, because you know it's half the price. And I have a hard time believing that it's half the quality. Max. Hey buddy. Will you replace that radiator for me? Please. Well, I guess Max isn't gonna do it for me. So gonna have to do it myself. mess this is gonna make. Stupid plow frames always in the way of everything. Let's see if the form of funnel can save us. Link in the description by the way. Fantastic tool. Beautiful. Anybody need to pee? Uh, that's it. It's empty. <laughs> I mean, that can't be more than a half gallon. It should hold probably at least four gallons. So, yeah, hope they didn't blow it up. All right, let's get into it. It's kind of interesting. It has one of these Gates shrink fit hose clamps on the upper radiator hose. I don't know why. You guys ever seen one of these? It's just a shrink fit band. Slip it over top of the, the hose there and hit it with a heat gun and it becomes your hose clamp. Yeah, but I screwed up. I cut the hose with my knife. So we're going to have to shorten that, which shouldn't be a problem, but that was pretty careless.
Well, what a shock. Should we just break it off and get it over with? I think that's where we're headed. Well, that one just pulled out of the plastic, so we'll have to deal with that later. Well, so far I'm pretty impressed. Most of the bolts actually have heads with, you know, a hex shape to them. It's less, significantly less crusty than that old red truck we worked on. I've got the hood supported with a hood prop. If I'm looking at this right, there's no way to remove just the radiator. It seems like it was designed with the charge air cooler radiator, and then if it had air conditioning, the condenser all is one pack, and you had to pull the whole thing up in order to service any of those components. I don't think the charge air cooler will even come out without pulling that whole unit out. So that's the plan.
Well, there it is. Charge air cooler comes off pretty easily once the whole unit's removed from the truck. So now I've got to peel it out of this kind of protective shell. And these six bolts here at the bottom, they do not want to come out. So we're going to try to do it without removing those bolts. I don't know if it's going to work or not. There's two of them down here that are missing. I'm pretty sure they're broken off. folks I'm gonna say they got the good out of this radiator I think it's probably the worst one I've ever seen that hasn't been patched so this is a massive improvement it looks the same all the holes are in the right places the ports I mean there are no mounting holes so we don't have to worry about that I think it's gonna work so let's get it switched over they're super hot for this truck they want it back ASAP. We're supposed to get another storm tomorrow with freezing rain and all kinds of terrible stuff, so they want it ready to go. Well, we're off to a bad start. That's all right, it's just a scratch. Anyway, these are the four isolator bushings, or whatever you want to call them. So the old one had these metal ears that you had to bend over to kind of hold them in place. The new ones don't have that, so I'm not actually sure what holds the radiator side to side. I guess we'll figure that out when we put it back together. But those look good. Then it comes with new fittings for the oil cooler, but we're gonna have to use the old ones because the hoses won't, won't match up to these. But we are gonna reuse the O-rings. Yeah, see how old and brittle these original O-rings were, so that's no good. So we'll steal the new O-rings, but we don't need these fittings. There we go. I think they're dash 12. SAE on this end and JIC on the other end. So, yeah, they're fine. A little bit of rust on this one, but nothing to worry about. The old radiator had these foam strips on the top and bottom of the core, sat right inside this channel. And the new radiator doesn't come with any kind of replacement. So, I called the shop where I bought this and I asked them what I should do. He said, just measure the core top to bottom. If it has the same dimensions and it looks like it'll go together, go ahead and reuse them. If they're different and it won't go together, don't worry about it. Well, this this core is about, I don't know, quarter inch, maybe a half a pinky width taller than the old core. So they won't go together if I put these strips in. Plus they're in really bad shape. So we're just going to eliminate those and we'll just use these isolator bushings top and bottom. He said with the aluminum core, it should be fine. Shouldn't need to have that full length support. So that's what I'm going with.
All right, we're almost there. Little snag with the ground wire. The radiator core and the support are both grounded by this little short harness. And I've got it bolted to the core, but the hole's in a slightly different spot than where it was on the old core. So now it will not reach over to this bolt. And I cannot get this bolt out, which it would reach. So what we're gonna try to do is just sneak it underneath of the charge air cooler and try to get it on this bolt here that mounts the bracket for the grill. And that should work just fine. Well, it helps if you get the right hole. There's the right hole. Don't make that mistake. All right, folks, I think we're almost done. Nothing super exciting. Putting it back together is the opposite of taking it apart. Ran into a couple of snags. First one, this clamp for the charge air cooler tube boot. It's stripped out. Plus these aren't really the best clamp for this application. You'll never get enough tension on one of these worm style clamps to really hold up to the pressure. So I got this new one. Stick that on real quick. Although, I'm not sure how much it matters because from looking at the charge air cooler, I'd say her days of maximum boost are behind her. The other little snag is the coolant. This is what I drained out of it. It's your classic green ethylene glycol, but this is 2003, so I think starting around 99 or 2000, International switched to an extended life coolant, and it should have this stuff here, which is an NOAT coolant. It's red in color. I believe it stands for Nitrided Organic Additive Technology. There's different kinds of extended life coolants. There's your OATs like Dexcool, which is just an organic additive technology. Then there's an HOAT, this is a hybrid organic. That's commonly found in Chrysler's. I think some Ford's as well. So it's kind of a minefield out there. And actually, I found that most people don't even know that there's more than one kind of coolant. They just put the green stuff in everything. Yeah, you kind of got to buy, buy the right stuff. Anyway, I put seven gallons of this Fleet Right 50-50 mix in it. Should be good to go.
I think we're good. 175 is as warm as I can get it without a load on it, even at high idle. Which, that's not unusual. There's so much cooling capacity in these big diesel engines. But we've got heat from the dash. So no worries there. It's just, yeah, hard to have heat when there's no coolant in the heater core. All right, folks, I think that's it. Radiator's replaced. That's all they wanted done. I don't see any leaks. I think it's gonna be fine. There's plenty of other problems that need to be fixed, but we're not gonna do that right now. They're really hot for this truck. The front main seal leaks like crazy. I noticed there's a big air leak between the compressor and the air dryer. The whole time it's running, it's just spewing out air. So lots of things that need to be fixed, but you know, replacing the radiator really wasn't too bad of a job. It took me about I don't know, four and a half to five hours, somewhere in there, to get the job done. And amazingly, we did not have to get the torch out at all. All the bolts came out. I didn't break anything off. So it's hard to complain about that. Anyway, thanks for watching. And if you guys like this kind of video, working on dump trucks and other municipal equipment, check out Jason, the municipal mechanic. I will put a link in the description box. You guys can go check him out. He's got some very detailed videos about all this kind of stuff. Snow plows and snow blowers and brush cutters and backhoes and you name it, he's worked on it. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. I've got a short clip I'll just throw in as some bonus footage. This is the aftermath of our third blizzard in three weeks. We had rain, which quickly turned to freezing rain, and then snow. Then the temperature dropped and the wind picked up. It's been blowing and drifting everywhere, making a real mess. This Suburban, he was actually traveling the opposite way, and he spun around and ended up in the ditch. I went out and talked to him. The truck seemed like it was in pretty good shape other than the plastic cover over the front bumper. It was still running and driving. So I came back and grabbed the Oliver, went out to see if I could pull him out. The audio on this video is useless. The wind was blowing so strong, I about, it about knocked me over, and I didn't have time to set up a microphone or anything like that. So I ran out with a shovel. We shoveled most of the snow out from underneath of the truck. He had four-wheel drive, but he just had some real, like, summer slick tires on there. There was no way it was ever going to pull its, or drive itself out of the ditch. Well, luckily, the state police showed up, and they were kind of helping us direct traffic. And I hooked it up with the chain. He had a trailer hitch, so it made it real easy to hook up. A lot of times that's the biggest problem with pulling pulling cars is there's nowhere to attach to. You can see the camera just blowing all over. Sorry, I didn't get the framing just right. I was in a kind of in a hurry. So the Oliver does not have a differential lock but it does have differential brakes, so I can actually stop whichever wheel is spinning and send the power to the other wheel. I got chains on, but it's just so slick out there. But give her a little bit of momentum, and out she came. You see that bumper cover flapping around there but I looked at the radiator it didn't seem like it was in you know punctured or anything like that so they got off pretty easy there they go off to the races he tried to pay me told him to just save it for some snow tires I grab my shovel, say thank you to the police officer who stopped, and on my way. He actually called in some backup to help with traffic too, but we didn't end up needing him. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay warm.